The recent release of the System Shock remake took me by surprise. In fact, I suppose you could say it was a shock to the system, because it is shockingly good. The original game is approaching 30 years old now, which is a really nice reminder that I'm getting old, and I imagine some of you are feeling the same way. But let's just ignore that and talk about how the original System Shock and its sequel were developed by Looking Glass, who are known for making games such as Ultima Underworld, The Stygian Abyss, back when they're known as Blue Sky Productions, then afterwards Ultima Underworld 2, Labyrinth of Worlds, Thief to Dark Project, and Thief 2. Games I actually really should play, because I do love stealth games, I haven't played the Thief games. Before I continue though, I'm going to do my best to avoid spoilers. I'll basically just be talking about the gameplay, weapons, puzzles, enemies, cyberspace, the graphics, etc. So for the main story, I just won't reveal anything critical. Part of the fun is figuring out where to go through the audio logs and piecing your way through the space station citadel. But without further ado, let's take a dive into Night Dive's version of System Shock. When it comes down to it, the System Shock remake is practically a one-to-one -one of the original, which might be great news for fans of the series back in the old days, but may be a little frustrating for the modern day gamer. By that I mean you're not going to have an objective right there in the right corner of your screen telling you where to go with the waypoint on the navigation bar. You have to pour through audio logs to figure out where to go, write down any codes you see, write down any notes you think might be important. That's something I personally love, but I forgot to mention that my only experience with System Shock was with the Enhanced Edition from Night Dive several years ago. And I wouldn't call myself a hardcore fan of the series, and by that I mean I just don't know it inside and out like most fans. I do really like the game. In fact, I prefer it more than the sequel, which is still an excellent game in its own right. But back to the remake. The difficulty selection is back. Like I said, this is a 1 to 1 remake, but the difference now is that you can only choose 1, 2, and 3 for each category combat, mission, puzzle, and cyber, meaning cyberspace. The standouts are that if you choose hard on mission, it gives you a 10 hour time limit, so I really don't recommend that for your first playthrough. And cyberspace on hard actually kills you in real life. So if you die in the game, you die for real, which is pretty cool, I might choose that next time. I went ahead and set everything to two, which is the game's normal mode, and I still found it fairly challenging. The enemies in this game hit hard, and supplies were really scarce, mainly in first aid kits and meta patches. It wasn't until the end of the game when I found myself absolutely overflowed with first aid kits. This isn't a knock on the game either, I actually love it. But OG fans may be disappointed to know that the original soundtrack does not make an appearance in this game. Developers went for the more serious tone in regards to the atmosphere of the game. But I did find that in the early parts of the game, just no music was playing. I actually thought my game was bugged for a little while, but it does play on in the later levels. It is creepy though, I find the soundtrack actually rather good. It would have been nice to have an option to switch to the original soundtrack or unlock it later on. I know it's probably not fitting, but it would be nice to have that. We do have upgraded graphics though, but whether they're good or not is subjective. Night Dive went with a more pixelated look combined with the modern day style of graphics. And I get what they were going for. But I honestly don't quite like it, but I don't hate it either. I'm not a graphics snob by any means, because when it comes down to it, I want good gameplay over good graphics. But an option to have some sort of anti-aliasing or some sort of blurring like bilinear filtering would be kind of ideal for me. I know that sounds absolute sacrilege to retro gamers, but that's just my preference. I do appreciate the well done weapon models though compared to the original. And for those of you who haven't played the original, the weapon models in that game were ultra tiny. Which makes sense considering the technological limits of the time, and the fact that System Shock in 1994 was an absolutely gigantic game. But onto the remake's weapons, and I double checked myself just to make sure I got this list correct. For melee you get lead pipe, monkey wrench, and a laser rapier which has no business being as powerful as it is with a berserk dermal patch. For energy range weapons you get a spark beam, ion pulse rifle, and a plasma rifle. And for ranged weapons with bullets, you get a mini pistol, Magnum 2100 pistol, a shotgun, a Scorpion SMG, a Mag Pulse rifle, which is good against robots, the Mark III assault rifle, a railgun, and a grenade launcher, as well as frag, gas, and EMP grenades, and a proximity mine. Some weapons don't make an appearance from the original, though, like the stun gun and dart pistol. 
I honestly don't remember those being too useful, but my memory is very fuzzy about the original game. I haven't played it in like seven years, I don't think. Out of all of these though, when I got them, I mostly used the laser rapier, the Magnum 2100 pistol, the shotgun, and the Scorpion SMG, as well as frag and EMP grenades. As you make your way through the Citadel, you come across these stations which sell multiple parts for your weapons. You can get them by exchanging Tri-Optimum coins, and to get those, you gotta recycle various objects throughout the station at a recycling station, or vaporize said objects into scrap, which gives you a reduced coin output at the recycling station. You can also use these coins to buy dermal patches, food, drinks, and ammo. I forgot to mention the dermal patches too, but you get a meta patch to restore health at a slow rate, detox, which detoxes radiation, stamina, which does what it says, Berserk, which is one of my favorite and probably the best normal patch in the game. Reflex, which gives you a sort of bullet time effect. And Sight, which I never use because you get a night vision upgrade in this game. So all in all, you have all these items and weapons to carry, but limited inventory. The game does provide a cargo lift to store supplies, but the problem is that it's very small. You can maybe fit one weapon in there and maybe a few more supplies and that's it. You do get two upgrades to your inventory system though. One you'll likely find just by exploring. The other, well I don't want to spoil it, but players aren't exactly a fan of this puzzle in order to get this upgrade. So let's just leave it at that. Dude, what can this strange device be, yo? The cyberspace section makes us return too, and I don't remember being too annoyed by it in the original, but I may have memory hold it, so bear with me. You still fight through various ice, open up pathways, destroy nodes to unlock specific rooms on that level. You still earn various cyberspace power-ups like the pulsar, the ice drill, the decoy, and the recall, which didn't really work for me for some reason, no matter how many times I pressed the left alt button. I may have missed something, so I'm sure someone will let me know. But it's a nice break from regular gameplay, but may not also be everyone's cup of tea. And that finally brings me to the wire puzzles in which you direct energy from point A to point B by manipulating directions in various nodes. You can bypass this puzzle by using logic probes, though you may want to keep one for a certain section in the game and you'll know it when you need it, trust me. When my cyborgs bring you to an electrified interrogation bench, I will have your secrets. And you, and, and you will learn more about pain than you ever wanted to know. Now for the story, which is the same as in the original, of course. Night Dive allowed us to explore the hacker's apartment before continuing the game, which I found to be a really nice touch. Exploring, you can see there's a System Shock big box on one of his shells, which is a nice little detail as well as a smiley face easter egg on one of the donut boxes that the hacker wears on his t-shirt. The hacker hacks into Troptum servers and downloads a military grade neural interface in which he gets captured by Troptum soldiers. Turn around! Now! He then gets transported to Space Station Citadel orbiting the planet Saturn in which Edward Diego offers him two choices. Decide. Hack into Shodan and remove her ethical constraints or leave the station in a coffin. He offers him the same military-grade neural interface that he downloaded from Trapton servers to sweeten the deal, and the hacker agrees. I mean, who wouldn't? I'd rather do that than die. Even though that's not really a smart idea to do that to an AI, but we have no choice here. But afterwards, Diego gives the hacker a fake employee ID, then sends him off to the neurosurgery ward on level 1 to undergo surgery for his new neural interface. Then wakes up after six months only to find out that Shodan has absolutely dominated Space Station Citadel, and then the game begins. And I don't want to mention any more than that because part of the fun of this game is pouring through the audio logs, writing down passcodes, and figuring out where to go. Despite that though, you'll likely will be lost because you might miss an important audio log that will bring you to the next objective, or you just miss a security camera somewhere, which you need to destroy to unlock some areas in the game. The story bits by story bits are the same, and the methods to stop Shodan are the same. So if you played the original numerous times, you may not be lost as many other people like me. Despite the fact that I did play this several years ago, I honestly don't remember too much about it. 
At least until I played the remake, that's when I started remembering bits and pieces like this area or that area and things started coming back to me. So I'm glad this is a one-to-one -one remake in that department at least. But like I said, the methods to stop Shodan is exactly the same as in the original. Even the voice of Shodan is the exact same voice actress from the original, Terry Brosius, which is pretty awesome. Figured I'd bring that up before continuing. On to criticism I've heard, mainly with vaporizing and recycling, which is pretty polarizing according to discussions I've saw on the internet. Mainly with the fact that you can only vaporize one item at a time. But I don't believe the developers were expecting players to vaporize literally everything, because after a while you just won't need any more coins anymore. But it would be nice to have a vaporize all in one button. But then there's nothing stop you from vaporizing literally everything that can be vaporized and having thousands of coins or something like that, so I don't think we're going to get that feature. Next is the graphics. The pixelated look isn't to everyone's tastes. It's not my favorite, but I don't hate it. But something like mod support would be able to fix this for some people. It's something I would use. Lastly, I feel like weapons don't have much of an impact when I swing my pipe at an enemy or shoot them with a gun or an energy weapon. It feels like there's not much feedback is what I'm saying. Okay, so overall, I said this remake was shockingly good, but why is that? A lot of that has to do with just how faithful this remake was to the original. Take the Resident Evil 1 remake, for instance. That game is basically like the original, with added features and mechanics that wasn't present that does not take away from its atmosphere, and was the game Shinji Mikami envisioned for in the first place. I pretty much ranked the Resident Evil 1 remake to the System Shock 1 remake, even though Night Dive didn't go as far as to add a stalker enemy or anything like that. And it may be a little too faithful, I heard, for some people, but I personally love it. I would love to see Night Dive do an enhanced edition of Ultima Underworld 1 and 2, but... Electronic Arts. They wouldn't even let Richard Garriott remaster his main series. So not likely to happen, unfortunately. But it's nice to dream. But I'm venturing back to the void to work on another video. I'm going to be doing Ultima Underworld in the Unity engine, because one person was asking for that, and I also want to do it. But thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Thank you, Hack Hacker, for seeing that my, that my vision is, is, is best.